Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel, HGM here, and it is that time of year again where all the double XP drops and special events are going on, and many of you will be looking to take advantage of this and gain some levels and champion points in the Elder Scrolls Online. Now if you want to fully maximize those gains, I've got another video I want you to check out next, and that is our ultimate grind guide which has all my tips and tricks, as well as my favorite grind locations for leveling up quickly. I have a link for that in the description, but you'll also be needing some powerful XP farming builds, and that is what today's video is all about. This is my list of the top five absolute best XP farming builds you can set up quickly and easily in ESO to completely phase roll enemies and gain those levels as fast as possible, and the list starts right now. Starting with number 5 on our list is the Magicka Sorcerer and a build we've called the Archmage. Now we do have a full build video on this one and I'll have that link down below if you want more details. Plus I am updating all of the written guides for these builds as well on my website hacktheminotar.com so make sure to check those out if you're interested. Now if you want a build that is very AoE focused and can blow enemies up sky high, this is definitely going to be the build for you. The Archmage is extremely fun and effective, especially as I said against groups of enemies that are close together, making it an awesome choice for overland XP farming. The recommended races for the Archmage build are basically any that have damage focused stats. Some of the best options in ESO for that would be the High Elf and the Dark Elf for that extra spell damage, or you can go with Khajiit for the extra critical damage. For the Mundus Stone, we will want the Thief for that extra critical chance, making the majority of our attacks a critical strike. Next up for consumables, I prefer something with both Magicka and Recovery for the food on this build. So a very easy option there would be something like Witch Mother's Potent Brew. You can buy that on Guild Traders or craft it yourself. And as far as potions, you can do just fine on this build with the basic Magicka potions. Basically the trash ones that you pick up from enemies. So you don't need to worry about spending any extra gold on potions. Now let's talk about sets next. For this setup, we will want sets that focus on both spell damage and critical chance. And for that, a very easy option will be the classic Mother Sorrow set. Now keep in mind this set and most of the sets in the game that I'm going to show you are actually getting updated very soon in the Deadlands DLC in Update 32 to include more hybridized stats, meaning spell and weapon damage focus. So just keep that in mind. The sets I'll be showing are from the PTS currently, but these will be going live very soon for all players, like I said. Now along with Mother Sorrow, we can equip another set with a lot of spell damage. Something like the crafted set New Moon Acolyte or even Law of Julianos will be a good option for this. And for your main weapon, make sure to use a Lightning Staff. For that, any of the sets that we're using on this build is fine. The nice thing about Lightning Staff is it does buff AoE damage, which is going to be the main type of damage on this build. And finally, for a monster set, a great option, especially if you plan on grinding solo, will be Slime Craw with that extra damage bonus through the minor Berserk buff. In terms of skills, I like to keep this build extremely simple. Just one skill bar is really all you need. Now, yes, you can up the damage with two skill bars, and I'll have that set up more detailed in the written guide, but just for basic grinding, one skill bar is very powerful on the setup. The skills that we'll be using are Daedric Tomb, Volcanic Rune, Elemental Ring, Inner Light, Critical Surge, and either Greater Storm Atronach or Suppression Field for the ultimate. Now we do keep the rotation on this build simple as well. Just start by dropping that rune and Daedric Tomb at the same time. They will take a few seconds to arm, but they should both explode roughly at the same time as well, doing a massive burst of AoE damage. Now you can follow that up if you need to with Elemental Ring from the Destruction Staff. That's going to do AoE damage as well. And then your Inner Light and Critical Surge are just your two main buffs that you're going to need on this build. Very, very simple. Like I said, and then you do have the ultimate in reserve in case you need it for larger pulls. For more information on this build, again, including the two bar setup, passives, champion points, make sure to check out the links in the description. Number four on our list of the top grind builds is going to be the Nightblade. Now you can go with either a stamina or magicka based Nightblade, but they are both strong options. My preference is actually more of a hybrid build focused on crazy alt generation. This is the Death Star build, again, link in the description for the full build if you'd like to check it out. Now, since this is a fairly unique hybrid setup, the recommended races for it will be those with hybridized stats. Dark Elf, High Elf, and even Orc all work fairly well due to their combination of weapon and spell damage racial passives. 
I also actually like Imperial a lot on this build thanks to the reduced cost on ultimates and abilities. Now for Mundestone, we will want to make use of the Thief again, which is an excellent choice also for hybrid builds, since it's going to buff both our weapon critical and spell critical at the same time. And as for consumables, just tri-stat food. You can do the basic purple tri-stat food. That's going to be great to increase all of our resources. You could even use Bewitch Sugar Skulls, which is usually fairly cheap to get on guild traders. And any trash potion is fine. Stamina, Magicka, even health potions will be great since we're really just using them to proc the Nightblade's ultimate generation passive on this build. Now the main set that you need for this build is going to be the medium armor set Deadwater's Guile. And this set will give you some fairly decent hybrid stats coming up in update 32 like we talked about, but it also has some of the best ultimate generation in the game. 15 ultimate each time you kill an enemy. Obviously grinding mobs as we'll be doing on this type of build will push that ultimate generation through the roof, letting you cast nearly non-stop ults. And for our second set, basically any damage oriented set will be fine. Again, crafted sets, New Moon Acolyte would be great, especially on this build for the extra penetration and the extra critical chance. The main front bar weapon you'll want will be dual-wield and ideally daggers. The reason for this is dual-wield daggers will buff both your spell and weapon critical for this build, which is going to be an amazing option. And for the backup weapon, we're going to use bow. Pretty much any bow is fine. Crafted bow, that's totally great. And finally, for the monster set on this build, we've again focused on ultimate generation. And a set like Balor, which gives us damage and penetration whenever we cast an ultimate, is going to have some amazing results on this build. As far as the rotation, things are a little bit more complicated than the Archmage build, which we saw previously. So we will definitely want both skill bars on this one to pull it off. On the front bar dual wield, we have Whirling Blades, Inner Light, Sap Essence, Camo Hunter, Silver Leash, and Soul Harvest for the ultimate. For the back bar bow, we have Endless Hail, Poison Injection, Barb Trap, Channeled Acceleration, Siphoning Attacks, and Shooting Star as the ultimate. Now for most XP grinding content, we'll only need the back bar ultimate, and not much of the skills really. You can save those for group content, for tougher bosses, things like that. Basically the way this build works is you pull a bunch of enemies together, grab Shooting Star from your back bar, cast that to start, because that's going to give you ultimate for every enemy that you hit. Then you're going to swap to the front bar to take advantage of your Soul Harvest ultimate, which also generates ult when those same enemies die. Plus, of course, we have the ultimate generation from the Dead Waters Guile set. Once you learn how to do this effectively, you pretty much have infinite ultimate generation. And from there, all you need to do is just spam a couple Whirling Blades or Sap Essences to finish off those easy kills and rake in the experience. Number three on our list is going to be the Bow Zerker, an easy stamina warden grind build with massive upfront bow damage and speed. This build is so easy to play and also extremely fun. And the nice thing is you only need a few active skills to make this really work. And for the ideal race on this build, I would suggest either Khajiit or Wood Elf. Wood Elf is obviously nice for the extra penetration and speed, as well as stamina recovery, but Khajiit also has a nice mix of stats and recoveries as well, and also the extra critical damage. Other races like Redguard and Orc can be quite good on this build also. For the Mundus Stone, we will want to go with the Lover Mundus, which is always a solid choice for any grind-focused or solo build in ESO. This Mundus gives you the extra penetration, which equates to more damage overall, which obviously just helps you kill things a lot faster. And any food that provides both Stam and Stamina Recovery will be ideal for this build. This is going to help you with Sustain as well as increase our overall damage. And as far as potions, basic Stamina Potions will be totally fine as well. Now in terms of sets on the Bozerker build, we actually want to focus on AoE damage for this one, primarily to improve our AoE Warden skills as well as those on the bow. And a great set for this is going to be Dagon's Dominion, which adds some great weapon damage to AoE abilities. And we can pair this with any other offensive set, and some great options for that would be something like Briarheart or even Spriggans. All of these are great options as well. Now we won't need a back bar on this setup, it's just that powerful. So just get yourself a front bar bow and you'll be good to go. And finally for the monster set, honestly things die so fast on this build that a monster set isn't really helpful for this one. Something you can try instead is to use two separate monster set pieces, for example, one piece Slime Craw and one piece Ice Heart for the extra critical chance. Or you could even throw on a mythic item like Ring of the Wild Hunt for even more power. Now the skills on this build are very simple. On the front bar bow, we have Subterranean Assault, Growing Swarm, Camouflage Hunter, Bombard, Bull Netch, and Wild Guardian for the ultimate. 
Now how this works is you will approach a group of enemies and then fire off your subterranean assault first, just a second or two early, because this skill does have a three second delay before it goes off. Then you're gonna follow that up with Growing Swarm, which will debuff all enemies in the area, and then finally spam your Bombard on the bow. Most basic enemies will have zero chance of surviving this combo, and even if they do, your bear pet can make quick work of anything still left standing. Build number two on our list is definitely one of my all-time favorites, and that is the Ice Storm Magical Warden build. This build uses frost damage spells from the Warden's class skill lines, as well as a frost staff for some really powerful Destro staff abilities that make for an extremely efficient experience farming build. And the recommended races for the Ice Storm build are going to be the usual High Elf, Dark Elf, maybe Khajiit, but you can also make this build work with other options. It's so strong that these won't make a huge difference either way. Now for the Mundus Stone, you can go with either the Thief or the Shadow Mundus. Both options will be fine in this case to help increase our overall critical damage focus on this build. Now for consumables, a basic blue food that includes max magicka and max health will be a good option. And basic magicka potions will be more than enough sustain if you need them at all, which you probably will not. The sustain on this build is ridiculous. Now as far as sets go, we will again want to focus on critical damage as much as possible. So sets like Mother Sorrow or Medusa that have very high critical chance ratings will be your best option. Combined with those, we will want a second set that focuses more on the ice damage element of this build. So a set like Frost by that Blackwood set could be very nice on this build. And you can even use a destruction staff focus set like the Spider Cultist from Fungal Grotto. That's going to end up being very strong as well. Whatever set you go with, remember to get a Frost staff as your main front bar weapon. And finally, for the monster set, you could go pure Frost damage with something like Ice Heart. That's going to be a very strong option for grinding, not just for the frost damage, but also for the extra damage shield for harder content. Or again, you know, you could mix in two monster sets with that critical chance focus, maybe Ice Heart combined with Slime Craw. Now, as far as the skills for the Ice Storm build, we've again tried to simplify this down to one bar to make things as easy as possible. This is going to include Unstable Wall of Elements, Bird of Prey, Arctic Blast, Blue Betty, Inner Light, and Eternal Guardian as the ultimate. You'll start by casting your buffs, including Blue Betty and Arctic Blast, and then simply spam Unstable Wall into a group of enemies to do as much AoE Frost damage as possible. Each time you recast the wall on the same group, it does explode for extra burst damage, basically freezing and exploding everything in your path. And much like our previous Warden Bow build, the Bear Pet is very nice here to kill off any remaining stragglers. This is a great build and a very powerful option for grinding XP that's also extremely simple. And that of course brings us to our number one XP farming build on this list, the Magicka Templar. For this I'm recommending the Lawbringer build which is another easy one bar setup with tons of damage potential and great passive healing and utility. This is by far the most flexible out of all the builds on this list, making it the best option for grinding more difficult enemies if you want to. The recommended races for the Lawbringer build are High Elf, Dark Elf, and Khajiit for the most damage possible, with the Mundus Stone being either the Thief or the Shadow. And in terms of consumables, Tri-Stat Food will be a nice option for this as we do actually have one very useful stamina skill in addition to our other Magicka costing abilities. And basic Trash Potions will be just fine if you do happen to run low on Magic. Now as far as the sets go on this build, we will want a balanced approach here with damage, as well as healing being the two main characteristics we are looking for. For a damage focus set, you can't go wrong with the tried and true Mother Sorrow to maximize that critical chance. Or if we want to go more spell damage on this build, since we only have skills that deal magic damage, you can actually get quite a lot of power from the War Maiden set. For our second set, if you want more passive healing, then a nice option will be Winter's Respite. This synergizes very well with the Templar's other ground-based abilities, and is very easy to proc on this class for free healing whenever you need it. And finally, for the monster set, you can increase your overall damage with something like Slime Croft for easy access to minor Berserk. As far as skills go on this Magicka Templar build, a one bar easy setup is going to be a breeze for grinding XP, and it's what I recommend for most players. This will consist of a Lightning Staff front bar using Solar Barrage, Channeled Focus, Inner Light, Puncturing Sweep, Degeneration, or Silver Leash depending on the content, and Elemental Rage as the ult. Basically how this works is you just pull enemies together using your lightning staff, light attacks, and once they are all grouped up, 
drop down your channel focus buff, followed by solar barrage, and then just sweep all day long. Things will die so quickly to this build, plus you're also getting tons of passive healing from Winters and Puncturing Sweep combined. Silver Leash can be used to pull in casters or archers into your AoE damage, and I recommend reserving that ultimate for the biggest pulls only to speed up your grinding time. With that said, that's going to wrap up this video on my top 5 XP farming grind builds for the Elder Scrolls Online. If you enjoyed the video today, don't forget to crush that like button. And I'd be curious to know what is your current favorite XP farming build. Let us know in the comments section down below. Remember that links to all the builds I've shown in this video are in the description. We also have a playlist of all our grind build videos on the left. And channel members here at HTM can access even more build videos on the right. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there and I will see you around in the next video.